Good day, folks. Thank you for finding your way to this video, however you did. Uh, I appreciate it. Um, we'll be going over some basic color theory in here. Uh, now, if you have a highly advanced understanding of color, this likely won't help you as much. As this video mostly goes over the basics, it's meant mostly for visual artists, those who draw, paint, animate, uh, photographers, designers, etc. Uh, although pretty much anyone should be able to follow along even if you're not one of these things uh, And if you are advanced, it never hurts to go over things, right? Okay, so without further ado, uh, let's jump on in uh, We will be going over a few terms uh, Such as hue value and saturation and if any of that seems intimidating at all to you don't worry um, We're gonna start off actually with something pretty simple and familiar uh, Primary colors, uh, which is kind of the first key um, in color theory. So red, blue, and yellow. And beyond those, secondary colors, which you're probably also familiar with, um, whether learning it in school or some other place. Uh, so orange, purple, and green. And then this next step is a bit where some people are surprised a little bit sometimes. Uh, are tertiary colors um, which don't have fancy names at all um, and we just get them by mixing our primaries and secondaries together so red and purple believe it or not make red purple um, and on down the line blue purple blue green yellow green yellow orange and red orange so those are our tertiary colors and kind of another component uh, to the color wheel is the middle which is kind of gray um, in a, in, a, in a sense okay so here's the color wheel which is basically the meat and potatoes of color theory all right so let's move on to those things we talked about earlier hue value and saturation so hue uh, is actually what we normally kind of think of as color so for instance this hue this red hue is kind of what we normally just call, you know, the color red. So it's, it's literally just that simple. Um, and then saturation, which we'll, we'll go over before value, actually, um, is kind of best, I think, described visually. Um, so here's a, a, a graphic, and we have the fully saturated in and uh, the most pure hues, if you will. Um, here at the top and then closer to the bottom as we get more and more desaturated we come to the unsaturated end which is very gray as you can see so it's just less color if you will um, the farther we uh, move more and more desaturated um, and so that that's really all there is to saturation I know a lot of these things seem kind of scary but it, it's it's more simple than uh, first first thought um, and then the next part here is value and so this is really broken up into three parts so we have our tints our shades and our tones and so with this each of these three means something a little different so tint is adding white to a color so for instance if I tinted this red here um, we'll get this kind of pinkish look right um, so that's just adding white uh, to a color is is going to get us what we call a tint which is kind of confusing right you think of tinting your windows it's darker but it's actually the other way around so a, a tint is adding white um, as opposed to a shade right which as you might be able to guess adding black to a color so now we get this kind of dark brick red or you know kind of color when we add that black and so that's a shade and then a tone is kind of adding gray to a color which uh, if we're painting uh, as opposed to digital art which we have it would be uh, adding white to a color and then adding black to it and when we did that we, we would kind of gray it out Okay, obviously with with in digital art we can uh, kind of cheat that a little bit, but that's that's kind of the way 
these three terms work. So the three uh, parts of value, tints, shades, and tones, okay? Now the next part I wanna go over here is color relativity, um, which is probably one of the most important things about uh, color theory that, that there is, okay? And so first we have our complement colors. So this is just the color, these are the colors that are just opposite each other on the color wheel, okay? So for here we have blue and orange, right? They're, they're opposite each other. And so these two are complements. One of the things that complements do is they really pop um, when you use together. And so, so for instance, this doesn't go just for blue and orange though. Um, that's for any color on the color wheel, right? So green and red, uh, or complements of each other, as are yellow and purple. Um, we also have, say, yellow, orange, and blue, purple, right, or complements of each other. So anything that kind of uh, on the opposite side of the color wheel is a complement. Now we also have something called split complements. And so uh, especially if designing, for instance, um, you might not always want to just use the complements of each other. So here you can see blue, instead of this blue going into orange, uh, with the split complements, you'll just go to two colors equally apart uh, on the color wheel. So for blue, uh, yellow, orange, and red, orange are split complement. Um, if we were, again, going with... Uh, we, if we were going with green, uh, on the other hand, then instead of going to red, we go with, uh, say, red, orange, and red, purple, and that's a split complement um, there as well. So again, not as kind of scary as, as color theory seems. Moving on, we also have what we call a triad, which uh, always makes me kind of think of the triple threat triad from uh, Legend of Korra for any avatar last airbender fans we have um but anyway uh so this triadic relationship uh on the color wheel we have colors that are equally spaced apart okay so well, you'll recognize these are primary colors right red yellow and blue um this is a triadic relationship they're equally spaced apart right so they're each three spots away from each other here on this color wheel um so you can also think of right another triad right off the bat, right? Green, orange, and purple, which are all uh, also three spaces away from each other uh, on the color wheel, right? So you have that uh, as well. And then the last one we're just going to go over here today is a tetradic relationship. It's a bit more of a mouthful, um, a tetrad here. And so this is also kind of known often as a double complement, right? So we, we talked about how blue and orange are complements and green and red are also complements of each other. So this could come up with some cool color schemes, for instance, if you're a designer um, and looking for, you know, different ways to do this. If you did do this as a designer, you probably wouldn't uh, use all of the colors equally. You might want to choose one dominant color. Um, but that's that. I'm not going to get too deep into uh, designing uh, styles in this video. Um, I'm just going to focus on color theory. So the next thing we're going to go over is these monochromatic and analogous. Okay, which kind of sometimes uh, trip people up because they seem like big words. Um, but monochromatic, what it basically means is using only one hue right and in whatever you're doing whether it's painting or uh, designing whatever the case may be um, so for instance this here um, would be monochromatic right I'm just using tints and shades right of the same hue right so this thing it's dark in some places, it's, it's light in other places, but this is monochromatic, right? If I brought in this green, for instance, 
this is no longer monochromatic. It'd just be if it's using these reds, okay? So that's all monochromatic means. It sounds a lot scarier than it is, um, like most things in color theory. Um, versus analogous, which is based on colors that are adjacent to each other on the color wheel. So for instance, orange, red, orange, and red. Um, so if I was, again, doing something here, we have this red, and we'd have this red, orange, and we'd have this orange, right? And so this right here is analogous, okay? Again, not actually that hard. Um, just colors that are next to each other, right? That's all it means, okay? So the next thing we're going to just go over really quickly is warm versus cool colors, okay? So our warm colors are kind of this half of the color wheel. And our cool colors obviously would be uh, this half of the color wheel, okay? And so our blues, our purples, our greens, um, those are cooler colors as opposed to uh, the reds, the oranges, the yellows. Um, those are more of our warm colors, you know, colors that kind of remind you of the sun, uh, perhaps. Okay. However, as we've been talking about this whole time, color is indeed relative, right? So, for instance, if I take uh, this red and this red orange and this red purple, um, right? And here we go, right? Analogous. Um, even on this red purple, we kind of grouped it in uh, with our warm colors earlier. This this red purple adds a cool element uh, to this, right? And so always remember that colors are relative to the colors that they are around. That's very important. And by the same token, um, if I was working this red, the same red purple versus uh, this purple and uh, say this blue for instance then now this red purple becomes the warm color right in this group so it's always something to keep in mind colors are relative to one another and what they're next to matters in fact i guess an example is probably the best way to show it so here um we have uh, what appears to be two different oranges but we take them both we will see that they're actually the same color although they really don't look like it here right this one this kind of uh, red orange is working off of its uh, kind of complement here in this blue green versus this red right um, and so they appear to be different oranges but they're not and so just always keep in mind that color is indeed relative to the other colors around it. And if you know that, you basically already got the basics of color theory. And uh, with that, I think I'll probably just wrap this video up. Um, if you have any other questions, feel free to leave them in the comments below. Um, I'll try to get to them and uh, answer them. If I can, if you want to hit me up on DeviantArt or Twitter, um, I'm at human named Ethan there as well, and uh, you can ask me questions there as well, which usually I'm on those pretty much all the time, so I'll probably be able to answer your question uh, relatively uh, quickly as opposed to YouTube. It might take me a day or so to get back um, to, to your question. Um, so with that, uh, I just say thanks for watching, guys. I appreciate it, and... Uh, See you guys later. I'm signing off. Thanks.